Hey everybody, welcome back to another part of the VW bus restoration series here. In this part, I'm going to finish sanding all of the metal down and as you can see, get it all epoxy primed on the exterior of the car. So stay tuned and see how I did it. All right, I'm about to just finish up on the sanding on the doors and hatches out there. I'll show you the progress shot on that. And I've been using the drum sander here. Right now it's got the 120 grit drum on it, but I actually did use this quite a bit. You can see it's it's pretty well worn down. Still got a little more life in it, but this is that 40 grit stripping drum. It's like that polycarbonate stripping type wheel. And then I would go, so I did the doors, a lo, just a lot of the, the outer sections with this where it's flat and, and, and you can just drum off the paint. And then I went back over it with the 120 grit wheel. It also came with a 240 grit, which maybe I'll do uh, just a, a quick pass uh, before I go to prime it, just to get everything, you know, all the scratches off, you know, from the metal scratches. And then I just got this new, a new crimped wire cup brush. And I get this is this I did a lot of this on the interior. This is a new one, made in the USA. Never seen this brand before. Prefer, preferred, P preferred. I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna see if this is a little bit better. I think I bought this probably at, at, at a you know a tr cheap uh, Harbor Freight kit, you know where it came with like three or four different types of wire brushes. And here's the cupped crimp brush. You can see it's pretty well, the interior pretty much did a number on this. So this one's ready for the trash. And uh, I got the angle grinder outfitted with the new one. And of course, any detail sanding around the windows, I'll just use this little pneumatic wire wheel, uh, pneumatic sander with the wire wheel. So that's what I'm gonna do. And let me show you where I'm at with the doors. All right, here's a little bit of a progress shot here. This is the main slider. Spent a lot of time in here just making sure that's prepped really well. Again, I'm prioritizing the prep work with regard to how much weathering that paint's gonna be on, on that particular piece. And as you can imagine, this is the exterior of the sliding door, and this is where the handle is, where there's just gonna be a lot of touching of the paint here, you know, when you're opening the handle. So I wanna make sure this has the best mechanical and chemical adhesion for the primer and paint. I've finished this whole piece here. This is the back hatch. Finished the engine lid. You see, you know, all y'all you can really see is a little, maybe a little bit of the old primer, the filler, and then bare metal. So that's, to me, that's good. That's that's where I want to be. That's good enough. And so now I just really, I'm just going to finish these two doors. So on the, you know, again on the insides where there's going to be a panel. So like there's going to be a little panel on the inside of that, a big panel on the inside of here. I'm not really touching that much. I mean, it did get prepped at one point. It got spot primed but I'm mainly concerned about the surfaces on the inside, on the edges, all the way around. So, uh, you know, again, focusing real big on the outside. Now, one of the problems I have with a polycarb wheel is where, now that I'm feeling it, it looks, I, I can already feel it's a little lumpy right here. I don't know if I did that with a polycarb wheel or if I just didn't have that re done really well. Again, I will go over that with that 220, the DA, just to smooth out everything as good as I can. All right, so here's what's going to happen next. I got everything sanded and wire wheeled and everything, you know, all in the grades I just discussed. All Everything's been sanded up to 220. I'm going to fill this bottle with water and spray down the floor just to make sure all the dust, I don't kick it up as I'm spraying. I also probably hose down my, my air hose too, the outside of the air hose, just to make sure that, that no dust kind of gets back in the air. I've got fans running right now to, to help clear it out. Then Zep degreaser, I'm gonna wipe down all, everything that I'm about to shoot, degrease it, then solvent prep, and then once I'm done with that, wiping all the surfaces down that I'm about to shoot with solvent prep, I can go ahead and suit up, and then grab a tack, get my paint mi or my primer mixed, put it in the gun, get my tack cloth, do one final wipe down, and then it's spray time. Well, I just finished spraying one side of them. I turned my lights off because it's a little dark in here. I don't really want to show them to you because they look like hot garbage. 
Uh, I made some new mistakes this time. Uh, had some issues with the regulator and the spray pattern, so got some major runs, and then I just noticed that there's some major lines in the in the places where I had filler from. I imagine from the polycarb wheel, which I sh what I should have done is sanded with my big eight inch uh, DA with 120 grit. But what that informs me though is that I probably should steer clear of that polycarb wheel when I'm doing the body, and just just maybe sand with the DA. Uh, the primer and I so yeah I, I went more aggressive because I I guess I didn't do the best job stripping these hatches but man yeah that polycarbonate wheel did a, a number on the the filler you can see it after you prime there's a lot of lines in it it's pretty bad so yeah I'm not gonna show it to you this is still just me learning you know so better learn now my on my second try of doing the HVLP sprayer not the end of the world, I just, but you know, I'm gonna have to redo some stuff as I'm learning. So, I mean, look at that. What, it's just, I just made a mess of, of that. So, learning experience. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just go back out to the car and start sanding the car and wait for these to cure a little bit and then I'll get back on these tomorrow. Well, I may be a little gun shy because of the, the way the doors turned out, but I don't think, I know I'm, maybe I uh, went a little overboard. I, I just was really concerned about using the polycarb wheel on that drum sander on the body because I didn't want to make the same mistake that I, that I made in the doors where I'll have to sand it back down. But I think this is working pretty well. I, th I think what I'm going to do, and maybe it's just because I'm a little gun, gun shy now with, the, uh, with that primer, but what I'm going to do as a test tomorrow, uh, is I've got this panel sanded down. I spent probably 20, maybe 20 minutes on that. And again, no going over, starting at 120. So nothing too radical. And so I've got the, the, um, the drum sander with the 120 wheel on. I've got my DA with the 120 sanding disc on. And then I've got my small DA with the 220. And so basically just start with that, then move to that, then move to that. And it feels really smooth. There's still, it's still very difficult to get the original primer off on some of these panels. So I'm gonna just go with that. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, just to make sure that things are going okay, is just do sand this the, just these two panels down this side basically the whole side of the bus and then spray it tomorrow Just a quick update. As you can see, my floor is soaked. I soaked the floor to get rid of all that dust, well, or to turn into mud, so it doesn't kick up into the air when I walk around. And I got the entire bus, the side of the bus, completely stripped down. And I try to be very careful around the filler to not gouge it. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. And the, like I said, I did the final sanding with my little five inch DA at 220, uh, but everything else was at 120, nothing deeper than that and trying to be careful around 
around my uh, filler work just so I don't have to redo it again. I already know I'll have to do some glazing work. third time's a charm. I got my primer mixed up and about ready to go and tack cloth, suit up, tack cloth that side of the van and prime it. And hopefully I don't have any major issues because I'm sick of redoing stuff. So cross your fingers and I'll bring you back in when I've primed that side. I'm liking this. I mean, this is not bad. I think, I mean, I've got one thin coat and the white really does show all the issues. So that's good. Like you can still see you could, see, you could see the actual um, work that I did, my body work, through the white. And so I got to basically here. And, I mean, there's a drip, there's a run, so I gotta sand those back down too. So, yeah, it's going, it's going. I think what I wanna do is, if the weather holds out, so um, I'm not going to sand too much on the new panels. I just got to get them smooth. So maybe, you know, a 220 sanding. This, you know, these panels that I know have been taken down already, that's new. This is new. I'm not going to sand those aggressively down again. And I'm going to try to be much more careful in sanding this area. So this whole panel, I know all the lacquer was gone. We sanded it down really well. This whole panel as well as this for sure was sanded well down when I did that body work and you saw that. So I'm just gonna, this is just rough because the primer was, that, that cheap rattle cam primer just didn't do a good job. So I'm just gonna sand that with a small DA just to smooth it out. But other than that, I'm not going to sand down this panel aggressively at all. Well today is so much more productive than the other couple days just because of not having to do so much lacquer removal, lacquer paint removal. So this panel has just been, basically what I did was I sanded it down at 120 with the big DA, the eight inch electric DA, just, just keeping it nice and flat with the 120 and just big strokes and just getting it cleaned off. But you see, I'm not really hitting too much of the, uh, of the filler and then you know, then I had to go more aggressive on these areas, but a lot less surface area I had to deal with. So all these areas have been sanded and wire brushed and all that. Um, and so my goal is to basically spray. I also, by the way, cleaned up some of the drips and areas that I screwed up on last time. So I think what I'm gonna do is spray, do a second coat of uh, on this piece and make my way around even yeah, I even prepped and fixed some of the drips that I did in the interior there. And anywhere that I don't want to get, I'm just lightly masking it. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going crazy with masking just because I don't need to right now. With primer, I can just remember what areas ha uh, need primed and where those lines are. But I'm going to try to get all the way around the back and up to this, to the opening of the door back here. So yeah, basically just feeling around, making sure if there's any rough spots, like I feel here, I'm gonna grab the, my little 180, my little 180 grit pad here, and just kinda hand, you know, just hand sand it. That's filler area, so you can see the filler's coming off. That's just rough from the filler. But yeah, anything that's a little bit rough, hand sand it. And I've already done one wiping of, de you know, degreaser and solvent prep. So anywhere else, I'll just, uh, you know, touch that up. And then I'm ready to respray. So I'll bring you back in when I've sprayed all, again, from this section here all the way around the back and then up to just the doorway. It's been a few hours and I'll just give you a shot. I you know fixed some of the runs from before and resprayed this panel here, sprayed around the back here, and then came around the other side here. I'm still having a serious problem with 
drips or runs. So I still got some more learning and figuring out to do. Like I said, just learn with that. Just learning on the primer before I get to paint. I'll probably have to prime five more times. So hopefully, if this is like my third spray with this gun. So hopefully another three or four more times, I'll get better at it. All right, well, I can't figure out where to end this video. So I think where I'm gonna end it is after this, where I finish spraying the entire exterior. And as you can see from the shot, I've got the, the whole cabin area, the roof and everything re-sanded back down. I was very careful around my intricate filler work that I did when I worked that nose. I think that was part 18 and a little down here. So you will see a little primer here because everything I did was hand, just hand long boarded, sanded again, but didn't want to disturb my filler work. This was all well down to bare metal before I applied the filler. So I'm not concerned about that. All, you know, that uh, being sanded much more down. So yeah, uh, machine sanded all this. There was a lot of lacquer. You can see there's a lots of little tiny rust spots that didn't, that were covered up before. And now I've addressed them. So that was good. And uh, yeah, so we're ready for the epoxy primer on that front there. Now I went, when I did the side here, I did do the upper sill up there, but I just, I did it from standing on the ground, you know, so I didn't get the top top. So what I think I'm going to do in this spray uh, is push the, when I push the bus back into my garage here, is I'm going to get up inside and I'm going to stand up there and just respray all from the top so that the gutter gets, you know, a good coating, uh, you know, that frame rail, and then of course go up to here and then I'll come back around and I still haven't resprayed. I got. I have to. Re, I have to spray, not respray, but spray for the first time. I cleaned all this out. That's a lot of pour 15 paint and just, just been, it's just resanded down. So that's, that's, uh, that's, re, that's prepped and ready to spray down there. And then of course my dog leg has to be sprayed, in there all the way around. And I have to spray. Sorry for the sun, but. I'll go ahead and just respray this whole thing there, but this will get sprayed for the first time. So that will be the entire exterior of the car. And here is the new front end. I was able, I managed to be gentle enough on this to get the, the primers down on it or re-sand it, but get it smooth and not affect any of the major body work. So it's still nice and smooth and I'm very happy with that. I also got a lot better with my gun work. Uh, there's a little bit of a heavy drip right there, but that's it. I did a pretty good job on, on this piece to not get drips everywhere. I think I'm getting better at not only did I mention squeezing the trigger of the gun and moving, but also just starting off the piece and then moving on to it. So like squeeze the trigger off the piece, move on to it, move on and then let go off the piece. So just make sure that, that I'm not squeezing the trigger on the piece, but squeezing it off the tr piece, moving it on, and then doing that a good mechanical uh, paint gun work. So I'm getting better and better at it. I don't know if I'm ready for painting yet, but there's still going to be some more priming that I need to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm, but I am seeing some improvement there. And it's looking really good. Everything is white at this point. So in the next part, I'm going to be finished priming these doors. You can see I got them set up in the paint booth here. And I haven't primed the inside or the, uh, the sides of the doors. So they're all laying here and I'm gonna shoot the insides of them and the sides of them. And those will be done with the epoxy primer. And then the next video in this, this coming weekend, the long weekend, I can focus on the fine tuning of the bodywork. So just focusing on coming back, uh, guide coating it, and getting it a little bit better, fixing filler issues and things that have been there for a while, and just fine tuning all the bodywork, respraying the primer, and then getting it all ready for paint, hopefully. And then that'll be the next part, and then we'll be on to the painting. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.